Ukraine is one of the few countries where paying a woman to carry your child is allowed. It's a world centre of commercial surrogacy as a result, and the fertility industry is worth $6 billion a year, with at least 2,000 babies born to surrogate mothers annually. There are those in Ukraine already calling for the practice to be banned, and then comes the war. Madeleine is a British woman whose Ukrainian surrogate is 13 weeks pregnant. She fled to Poland with her son, her mother and her younger brother. Madeleine told me what they've done to support her. We've paid for her to have an apartment in Poland for um, five weeks. And during that time, we're obviously hoping to get the visa and everything sorted so that she can come here to live with us. And, And do you think that's going to be possible? It's definitely looking promising. Early on, it was a little more problematic, but we wrote to the MPs. Our our lawyer wrote to the Home Office, which we sent quotes for. There definitely things have been moving forward, and we have been now um, offered kind of a bespoke visa for the surrogates to come to England on. And she'll live with you, presumably, until, until she has the baby? She'll live with us until she has the baby, and then she can live with us for as long as she wants. It's not like you have the baby, you go. No, she can stay here for as long as she wants to or needs to. Her hope is to get back home. She doesn't want to stay in England long term. She wants to be able to go home. And what about the rest of her family? Um, Will they be coming with her? Obviously her son will be coming with her. Um, We offered for her mum and her brother, but they want to stay in Poland um, for the time being and wait to see how things um, develop. And does the fact that she'll be having the baby in Britain rather than Ukraine changed the legal position? In Ukraine, the baby's never hers, um, whereas I think it's a bit different here. I think, yes, technically she has more legal rights here. She could turn around and say, no, I want to keep the baby. But paperwork-wise, I don't think it's going to be entirely different because even though our names would be on the birth certificate in Ukraine, we would still have to go through the same process here because that's not recognised in the UK. The baby that she's carrying isn't biologically hers, it's biologically ours. So she feels, already she feels very distant from that. So she doesn't feel as if it's her baby. She feels as if it's her job. Why did you go to Ukraine in the first place? What was, what was it about the sort of conditions there and the law there that made yeah. you see that as the right place to go? Well, what I can tell you is that nobody goes to the Ukraine without having had a journey of heartbreak and grief and loss it's not a place that you can go to because you've got a lot of money or you're too posh to push. Um, there are very strict guidelines around surrogacy in Ukraine. For us, we'd had nine years of, of not exactly infertility, but a nine-year trauma of trying to have a baby with um, four miscarriages and then the death of our daughter who died when she was five weeks old. And after that, the doctor said to us, if you want a baby, you need to find a surrogate. You will not survive another birth. So at that point, you start to look around and surrogacy in England is difficult because there isn't the paid factor. So it's hard to find a surrogate. There's a long wait if you can never find one. And every year of that fertility journey is another year that you feel has been stolen away from your life with that child. You know, I'd got to the point where I didn't want to keep waiting. We'd got so close last year with having our daughter I just wanted to get on with it I went on to lots of forums I asked lots of different people and I found a lawyer within that forum who said to me she'd looked at the laws in every country in the world that offered surrogacy and the laws in Ukraine were the best to protect both us the intended parent and also the surrogate Do you feel at all awkward about the fact that there's a paid element in, in the process? Well obviously I would like to have had my own child and then that would have been for free. But even within that, for us, it wasn't free. We had to go through IVF, which cost a fortune. It would have been lovely if we'd had somebody that could have done it for free and, and it's beautiful and a wonderful thing to do. And we did have people come forward in our own lives that offered. However, when they went to the doctors, they weren't suitable candidates for one reason or another. But at the same time, this woman is doing an incredible thing for us. She's making all of our dreams come true. And in return, we're able to give her money that's going to change her life. And the aver- average annual wage in Ukraine is something like £2,000. So when she's earning 17000 it's a huge life-changing opportunity for her. And that's how she sees it. She sees it as an opportunity to, to change her life completely, to buy an apartment, 
to give her son a better future. After all you've been through, it must have been a real shock when suddenly out of nowhere uh, Ukraine was invaded. It's definitely a shock. A shock, sickening, um, stressful. And that's just for me. Can you imagine what it must have been like for her? We're sitting over here watching it on the telly. She's having to live through that and experience it. And that's her home at the moment. She is our full focus. She and her son are our priority. We know that she's carrying our child, but it kind of transcends that. It's bigger than that, isn't it? Well, that was the experience of Madeline. Natalie Gamble works for NGA Law, a British firm specialising in fertility law. She's working with 31 British families with Ukrainian surrogates. Good afternoon. Hello, good afternoon. And are they, I mean, I imagine they're all different, but are they all broadly similar um the cases the other cases that you're dealing with yeah i mean it's hearing madeline speak it's kind of the very typical surrogacy story for parents who need to look overseas to places like the ukraine um but among those 31 families that we're working with we've got people in lots of different situations so we've got some babies just born um we've got some surrogates like madeline's who've left ukraine and are in other places sometimes with kind of nowhere else to go um, and we've still got some surrogates in the Ukraine where parents are kind of desperately worried about how they're going to reach their babies once they are born. So it's quite a complex picture with due dates over a long period of, you know, the months ahead as well. So it's um, you know, lots of different challenging situations to deal with. And what about the babies just born? Very difficult for them to to come out at the moment, I would imagine. Yeah, well, I'm very pleased to say that we've had five babies born and all of them are now home safely with their parents to the UK. So the government has been incredible with processing emergency passports very quickly and meeting people at the border with documents they need and so on so that we can you know, get babies out for parents that were already in Ukraine and now needing to leave with them. And on the broader point, what is it that makes Ukraine so much of a centre uh, for surrogacy? So as Madeline was saying, it's one of the few countries around the world that has laws which recognise surrogacy arrangements. So the intended parents are recognised as their child's legal parents from the moment of birth. And that's something that we don't have in the UK. And that legal certainty certainly kind of attracts a lot of parents from around the world. Do you think that that's um, a healthy situation? I mean, it is, it is awkward, isn't it, that we recognise that parents might want to do this, but they have to go abroad to, to make it happen. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we deal with a lot of surrogacy cases and what we see that is more than half the British parents who have children through surrogacy now have children being born outside the UK. So it's not just Ukraine, it's also the US and Canada and other places as well. Um, but it's a product of the outdated laws in the UK that really kind of treat surrogacy in the same way it was treated in the 1980s, where it's treated with suspicion and there isn't recognition of everybody's shared intention that the intended parents will be the legal parents. So it, it's really the kind of product of our legal system that people are being driven to go overseas instead there, there will be people who listen and, and say they think it's exploitative it's surrogacy is something that can it's a, a human enterprise where people kind of are, are matching to to do something together and it's very very important that everybody going into that has gives informed consent and has full understanding of what they're getting into and mm. um, but there are some very you know ethical and well established ways of do, doing surrogacy in a very sensible way and you know we would want to see something like that for the UK as well so that surrogacy can be properly supported Natalie Gamble thank you very much indeed for joining us